Okay, I've put together a lot of different information with regard to mostly, almost, almost entirely the exterior of this since the last film, MCY DRM4, at the end of January. So some of this dates from before, from, from January and February and early March before we even, uh, before you guys decided I would actually design this and provide the drawings. So some of this is going to be irrelevant, A, and I'm going to forget why I made some things, B, and I'll just try to gloss over that. I'll try to get to the root idea of this whole film, which is, uh, because I haven't even really thought a lot about the interior. But, but that's what I'll be doing over the next 10 days or so, is developing that interior. So while I still thought that that uh, interior, that basic footprint was what we were going to be working with, I wanted to work with that exterior some, and I wanted to work with the siding selection and various color uh, combinations, which I don't know anything really about color. And this is where you guys uh, come in and mold, mold and meld this and make it what you want but I will show you enough to be able to at least envision how different textures and colors are going to impact whatever structure you end up with and that much said the whole thing is based on that existing structure that we were working with and it will probably not look anything like that at the end but all of these exterior details are still going to apply in all of these various and decisions are still going to apply so it's important for you to immerse yourself in that much of it for now and don't worry about the floor plan on the interior at the moment uh, so without further ado plod through this this apparently is the various colors available from certain teed the manufacturer certain teed uh, for the vinyl siding for various portions of vinyl siding and Ours, the ones that we're looking at, is this board and batten, more or less. And of those, they have these cedar boards. That's your 12-inch board and batten. But it looks like what you have on your garage, those ribs are spaced at 8 inches on center. And there will be a whole discussion, I suppose, to be had on whether that garage is sided with this uh, to unify both of these structures. And I apologize if I've covered this before but the 12 inch board and batten has this inch and a quarter thickness because it's got this foam under it. And this 12 inch stuff, the 12 inch stuff and the eight inch stuff, which both have this hard edge profile on the batten are similarly priced the 12 inches and maybe a little bit more, 5% more maybe. And finally, I find both of these products, uh, all of these products on a single page and so this is the single 8 inch it's hard edged like that but it's only a half inch thick and these are the colors available on the right not over here and so the only one that's close to the existing garage is going to be cypress and maybe this uh, sandstone or whatever this is here but that is the 8 inch wide now this this seven inch wide you can see it's not the same type of product in the same type of batten and that is half the price of this and it is available in a much wider variety of colors as you can see for whatever reason uh, they're able to make this in these all of these colors whereas this eight inch is available is limited to that and the 12 inch is even more limited to just these colors here. And finally, this is this reverse batten, board and batten. It goes in like this. It's a little thicker. And those are the colors available there. And I did not realize when I did a lot of this work uh, below, but it doesn't really, it's completely immaterial practically. Uh, but I thought that this eight inch was also that inch and a quarter thick and it had that foam behind it, but it does not. So my model is showing a thicker siding, and as a result, I was showing thicker casings. This will largely not impact things. It will still uh, look quite similar uh, one way or another. And since at this time, I also wasn't sure 
whether you might end up with fiber cement uh, board and batten and then your color choices would be the complete range uh, so but I'm able to adjust these colors in a variety of ways to reflect whatever you want yeah I horsed around with this inside a little while just messing around with that area there and then picking the ones that would be available it was, looks like I was looking at the 12 inch here and I really everything else I end up showing is in the 8 inch and you can see in the 8 inch here are the colors available and the only one that's going to be close to me to that existing garage is or to a pea green that you described in your text is cypress or savannah wicker so we're going to have one of these cypress or savannah wicker and because of the text with regard to pea green i lean towards cypress so that is the other thing everything that's shown in this the rest of this film is all with regard to cypress it's easy enough to switch it around to savannah this is why it might be entertained that this is sided over at the same time to just bring both of these structures together right now they were departing because this was vertical and that was horizontal siding so it's probably and just eliminate this if that's not going to be used my feeling is it would be very inexpensive to just extend this roof over because really that's just two more of these trusses to get another nine feet width here and whatever end wall type of situation they might design this is just from the same metal building manufacturer but that just came up during the filming and so now to keep on moving and there's these are just going to be a series of photos and I will try to like I said not wander and try to stay with it first of all these as you know these are indicate where these are all casement windows first of all and and it, you can disagree with anything I say in this film and throughout this film but these are all casement windows that we've been looking at and when it when they're shown like this it means the hinge is on the left and once I found out that the wind was coming from this way I flipped those all around almost all of them around all of them right here and my thinking on that is not so much that they would get ripped off their hinges by the wind but just that you could be able to get a good breeze without opening those further than necessary uh, which would obstruct your view you however live there so you may disagree but that is another thing that we'll be wanting to think about going forward with the, whatever we end up with but this is a little series of slides and this will be just an elevation view it shows you some of the changes and then I will show you the other views and so I noticed I had your garage doors wrong they're five panels wide so I corrected that and you'll have to just ignore this this is artifacts of how I had to put these roofs together to make some of the other stuff work and then I actually built this that profile the profile of that hard-edged uh, 12 inch and the hard-edged 8 inch so that we'd have as accurate a representation as we could I built a texture to actually reflect that and this is the 8 inch with the square edge ribs at 8 inches on center and everything as I said at the top everything is going to be in Cypress going forward uh, next it took me a minute to actually find the difference here but because I know uh, regardless of whether we use Savannah or we use Cypress uh, there is going to be a difference at that garage you can pick it up here and I, you know, I don't know what the difference is actually going to be. And you could probably have some of this product shipped to your house or buy some of it and bring it over there. And I'll look into actually seeing how big a chip we can get. But in the worst case scenario, it's something like this, where it's uh, an entire departure, which is similar to what it was before it wasn't anymore. And, and then this is the approach I think I may have even stayed with this approach where that's getting sided where that garage is getting sided at the same time uh, simply for unification because this is going to be it's going to be a little bit more than some of the um, mobile homes the two or three mobile homes and uh, 
it's going to be different obviously than the farmhouse up on the hill but I wonder if it, for a value from a value standpoint whether it might just make sense to at least go ahead and side those three sides and we'll figure out what the up cost on that is so that some sort of a reasonable decision can be made with regard to it but I believe I have left it where they're all matching one way or another because and again one of the reasons I did that is I was thinking maybe this is done in fiber cement this part here and then it can be painted to match that exactly uh, but leaving that aside and by the way this is just an aside if you know if you can find out who manufactured the, who the manufacturer was on this and these colors are so standard anyway uh, but that would be very helpful probably first of all as part of the information in this film this is a section view through that through that front window looking toward what was then considered the bonus room or whatever uh, showing you these window heights the ones that are facing out front where their sills are and how high they are the same with this little one this is almost an oddball here we'll be looking at that a little bit but I like that being preserved because of that view that way but again all of the massing of this is likely to change because of the change in plans and uh, where we're going to a three bedroom a lot of times in these nine foot ceiling ones they use seven foot doors and that's I mean those are similarly priced I would think uh, they must be a little bit more though uh, but that is what is often done in these nine foot buildings but some of your area is only eight foot and that would all be six foot eight doors so we'll be thinking about that a little bit also as to that doorway on the left that's the hall door and that looks like it's skinny casing but it's really just because I have that uh, seven foot high with no casing on it and you're seeing the casing of the door to the bedroom down the hall beyond just to clarify that I didn't use two inch casing on the side of that doorway next I began to work with this exterior casing these exterior window sills and I started by getting rid of that casing, that straight casing, and using a typical cell. And then uh, looked at some of these. This was a search for rustic exterior casing. And there are some shutter shacks there. Shack shutters there. And so I just wanted to get a feel for that. And I began to make our sills down here chunkier going to you know that's probably three and a half and then all the way to five and a half and that's what I stayed with for whatever reason I mean that's just what I did and you'll be able to make some judgments on some of this and I wonder what this was about this was just yeah working with your palettes in the event that you were able to horse around with various colors we are going to be because yeah this was from Hardy this was all there kind of and you can see there's a lot wider range now I know what this photo is about this was I this is some sort of burgundy like a darker brownish color and I assume that's what you meant in your text or something of that nature so again you guys can tell me particularly with regard to this ca these casing colors at the exterior uh, and this was built on the other, the, the certain teed who makes the Cypress vertical siding. That, you know, they make also something in Country Lane Red, something called Country Lane Red. And you can get this in Hardy, or Roy can just clad all these casings. They, these casings can be three quarter, five quarter, inch and a half casings that can be just clad with an aluminum of any color practically that you would desire and there's a lot to be said about color going forward and I'll just try not to go on and on about it but the first thing I did was added that color to your casings and then 
designed this little shutter shack with a little tree. I wanted to say Christmas tree. And this was how this was treated here. Where this window is pushed and these windows are have five uh, these have five and a half inch headers and they are pushed these main ones are pushed all the way up to the soffit here and here and this is this one gets really close here and it took me the longest time to figure out why this is not all the way up to that and the reason is that this headboard up here is six and three eighths so that it comes up underneath this soffit and we have the required heel height inside and this is a simple five and a half inch wide now this whole style this is probably siding people aren't going to like this because they have to run J channel all the way around all of this here and so we can just go to squares where this comes down a lot more trim it's not shown in this film but again this is something we'll be thinking about as we go forward but this is how it finishes detail and this is all just these are you know your your inch and a half over frame and I just have that covered with aluminum and your typical soffit this material here all this is stuff that you can specify the color of and that's how when we were when I was working with this structure that is how I treated that and I was finally satisfied that this was all very neat and clean from these angles and whoever is doing the siding you have to have a good siding person a good aluminum person and you have a good product otherwise it will look like garbage so that's going to be critical inside this is a pretty hard detail here but that but this is all immaterial because I don't think you're gonna end up with that so even though this is a more traditional more rustic kind of look it would definitely the siding people would definitely appreciate it if these are just squared off they could still be like this, where this is a regular sill type element with the casing dying on top of it, and this is a, a lintel type element, but just where the installation is a lot more streamlined. Now, keeping in mind you can disagree with anything I've done, I'm just trying to horse around with this in the meantime. But the next thing I did had to do with these, uh, for one thing, I changed that transom over the door to the same type of material that the door is made of and raised the door to a seven foot high door in that nine foot room and I added this casing presumably because of the presumption of adding the siding around here I added this casing aluminum or whatever you would like around these doors and the same note with regard to squaring those off and saving money is in order and then it was just, you know, messing around with these, um, some more colors. Just spreading more of that brown or maroon or whatever color you end up determining. Because the green is set, right? The green is set and the roof is set. So all these roofs match. So those two colors are there. And you just have to pick this third one, which remains entirely flexible since that's not tied to anything. And I'm just showing it as, as this. This is, I believe, that country lane red or, or certain teeds red product. But again, this is for mood and spirit more than anything else. So then I finally get that roof straightened out. And add, now this is a river rock type blend. Altered these shutters a little bit, made the tree a little differently, a little taller. And then because, you know, you just have one shutter hit, that's the only opportunity on this unless we you know start changing around some of these windows which is more than possible and that's what this does in addition to getting a bit of a lot of this white look and going to a more earthy tones we change this where we somehow regard however we plan the inside we can afford at least a couple of these windows out here and these these are new shack shutters with um, this might be a familiar motif to some and again so that's the last uh, part of this uh, elevation view slide progression now I think the best and most efficient way to do this really the whole rest of this I had been going through various sections that I wanted to cover for sure but I think all the rest of this is uh, be best if I just page through these slides right now it's right now it's arranged by file name 
so there must have been some meaning to that so I'm just going to progress through them and you can see the various things uh, that have happened and I'll try to keep my commentary to a minimum this must be the wicker and you know there's some you know I don't know if I'm getting that com completely right uh, but I'm trying to match it to what is available from their sample swatches and this is what it ends up looking like uh, the wicker but eventually because I guess because I, I think because of the green the pea green indication on your part in the text uh, I re reverted away from that And at first it looks really minty, and I don't think it's that minty in real life. It's called cypress, not mint. Now I'm adjusting the camera because one of the things I did is adjust all of this uh, terrain a little bit more to get a little bit more accurate to what was happening. And I still have to do some work at the back of where we talked about that culvert. Here is something I always auto correct these. So give me a second. I think I got them all. This was because those vinyl windows are available with that bronze exterior. If you wanted to tone that down, uh, you could. I don't know, for some reason, I could not get rid of this white here. In some of them, I was able to make this show what I would intend it which would be that brown, at least for that particular representation. But this white wanted to persist. I don't know if there's a sign in that or not. In some of the views it's okay, but most of them I prefer that the same color as the roof. But I, for some reason, I'm flummoxed by it. But so this was the bronze exterior on the windows and doors, leaving the garage doors alone. But then reverting back to the white since the garage doors are white already. That is the river rock stone. And I don't have that land quite right out there at the front. I know it has to go down some more. And this, these were just trying to get that roof to look like it had the actual uh, textured ribbed roof, but uh, I was having difficulty. And these rock textures are not very good. There are better ones once you refine those choices. But this was that river rock, that roundy river, lock, river rock looking uh, veneer. And this was just me figuring out where that land is supposed to be with your existing slab. But also, the rock was changed to a more, I don't know, some sort of a, a, a craggly, rougher edge type rock across there. That was just what I did for another look for you to see. And with regard to this rock, we can bring it up a little bit more. I mean, we can bring it, we can do whatever we want with it. But right now it's shown where it's only covering over the CMU, the, the concrete block foundation. You can bring it up across the wood framing. You just have to use special technique there. But to me, it was either going to come up, and I do show it eventually up, up a little bit more, four or five inches more. But after that, the next move really is to bring this water table, and this is just an aluminum clad water table, this red stripe here. Uh, to me, the only next, in this, with this house put together like it is, the next thing would be to bring that all the way up here. And then half of this is done in stone, which is, is fine with me, and it might be fine with you. But I didn't show that right now. And this is a new view from the straight in front of it. So this must be the west or the straight east.
Believe it or not, that's the same thing, just in different light. This is to show you just the effect that these different textures are going to have, and that is what you have to kind of choose. Eventually, I got so fed up with that roof, I modeled the ribs myself, and at least now, at least on certain views, they actually show up. So I like this just because it feels like it has a lot of texture to it. Yeah, it's probably because of that craggly rock, mostly. And I like the balance of a lot of different colors going on through here. But that's me, and you guys will have to lead that um, decision-making process. But you can see that if this gutter is changed, then, then all of this different, all of this is all new, so that can be anything. If you want to coordinate with this, then you might have to change that gutter, or again, this white persists. And I believe that is going to be that for now. So that was just all the exterior stuff, some things to think about particularly with regard to color and texture and extent of stone, that sort of thing. But that was, I'm ready now to begin to look at that interior floor plan and that's what I will be doing and getting you stuff over with regard to that. But I will talk to you soon, I'm sure I still have to adjust some of the stuff for the dimensions you took over there and put that, get that rear land about right uh, but then it's all floor planning, and it shouldn't be long after that before we really start to get something together. So thanks a lot, and I'll be in touch.